Hello, my name is Marco Pellegrini. I'm a lead consultant clinical psychologist. I work for Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust. Hi, I'm Georgina Coupland. I'm an assistant psychologist in the LD community team in Lowestoft. I also work for Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust. Hello, my name is Amber Ovens. I'm also an assistant psychologist. I work in the Old People's Services, also working for Norfolk and Suffolk Foundation Trust. In this video, we're going to talk about how our responses to the pandemic can change over time. This is coming from previous experience on pandemics and from research. This uh, timeline has been put together by the British Psychological Society in a recent document and is part of how we respond basically uh, to the psychological needs of people that are dealing with a pandemic. In the first phase, that is called the preparation phase, it's usually when people are making plans to face the pandemic. There tends to be quite a lot of anxiety around it, and it's when lots of discussions happen with regards to how the outbreak can be contained and what can be done about it. In the active phase that follows, there's usually a time when people are actively putting in place solutions. In this phase, people may really go the extra mile and help each other and do things they weren't doing before or working long hours and it can be quite tiring getting through this phase because there's usually quite a lot to do and quite a lot of problems to resolve. What typically happens, especially if the pandemic keeps um, going ahead for longer than expected, is that people start feeling tired and often exhausted. And this can be accompanied also by the sense of disillusionment. This is important because this is when people can become more vulnerable to be psychologically affected by the pandemic. When a pandemic is over, it's usually called the recovery phase, and it's when society as a whole and the people are starting recovering from, from the pandemic and its effects. It is actually a very delicate phase psychologically, psychologically because this is when people are more likely to experience psychological injury or psychological effects that can be long term. So ongoing emergency situations can be really disorientating and often overwhelming, which can compromise our ability to cope with problems. So on this slide, it just provides some information and some strategies that aim to reduce stress and promote helpful ways of coping. So some of those include coping mechanisms that have worked well for you in the past and think creatively about how you can adapt those into the situation that you're currently facing. To make plans for coping with social isolation, set and maintain a normal schedule, make sure you get enough rest, nutrition and exercise, take part in online support groups, use humour, focus on something practical that will help you in the moment right now, understand that people will cope in different ways and they'll show different stresses and they may become short tempered, but that's all normal. Pay attention to the reactions and behaviours of children and also help the young people understand that adults can also behave differently. So some of the kind of unhelpful examples, um, these can be seen as um, understandable responses to traumatic or overwhelming events, but they can also lead to other problems. So spending large amounts of time watching news programmes and channels and broadcasts about the pandemic can induce stress. A, lot of, a loss of structure to the day, excessive alcohol and consumption and substance misuse, withdrawing from friends and family, overeating or undereating, blaming self or others and resorting to excessive or aggressive behaviours. So how to respond? So if someone is experiencing any of these responses, it is important to respond in an effective way. These are some skills that you can use in a situation to aid you. So good communication. So this is really important to remember. So remain calm, show understanding. This can help someone who is distressed feel more safe and secure. Additionally, actively listening is a great skill to use when you are responding and in conversation with somebody who might be distressed. So active listening is showing someone complete engagement, trying to understand the whole message without any distraction. Uh, this can be done through both verbal signs of engagement and also nonverbal signs of engagement. So some of the verbal signs include things like defining terms to promote clarity, repeating terms back to the person you're in a conversation with, don't interrupt them, don't rush to fill silences and give a little bit of feedback. 
You can also ask follow up questions as this also aids in clarity. There are some also some nonverbal skills that you can also use, such as nodding, eye contact, facial expressions and gestures. Quite often your nonverbal signs of engagement can often say more than your verbal cues, so make sure you're aware of them when you are in a conversation. Moving on, body language, facial expressions and eye contact also help to communicate how you feel and it also reflects in the conversation that you're having with the person who's distressed. Finally, be yourself, be genuine and be sincere in offering your help. On the right hand side of this slide, there are a few things to do when responding. So some things that are best to do and some things that maybe not advise so much. So the things that are best to do are things like keeping information confidential, active listening and showing engagement, being patient and calm, providing factual information. So if something's outside of your remit, it's absolutely fine to find other support, signpost, um, but don't give information that you're not 100% sure on. Be honest, allow for silence and just be yourself and be friendly. Some of the things that aren't advised in a situation when you're responding are don't pressure someone is telling you their story. Don't interrupt or rush them. Don't touch a person if it's not appropriate. Don't judge. Don't talk about your own troubles, but it is perfectly fine to talk about shared experiences. Um, don't give false promises and don't be negative. And that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for listening.